your keeping power thank you for all the battles you fought for us we are not aware of thank you for saying no to the devil all the time thank you receive glory receive thanks we have gathered at your feet we ask in Jesus name that you will send your word to us let your word refresh us let your word beat us to shape, align us, and perfect the things that concern us. Thank you, precious Father. Anoint me to speak like your oracle, and let your word find free course in the lives of your people. Thank you, precious Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. That amen is terrible. Amen. <laughs> Give the Lord a big hand as you take your seat. Amen. So in continuance with our discussion on the new creation realities, we'll be talking about your inheritance in Christ Jesus. I like to title it, You Have an Inheritance. You have inheritances, actually. You have inheritances. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 11 in whom also take note of the word in whom in whom in whom also we have obtained an inheritance he didn't say we will obtain an inheritance he said we have you see everything about us in christ jesus is present tense or how do they call it now we have it's past tense <laughs> His pastors we have obtained an inheritance hallelujah we are not about to you see you have obtained it but the reality of it is what we are waiting for are you get what i'm saying now in whom also we have obtained an inheritance being predestinated according to the purpose of him who walketh all things after the counsel of his will after the counsel of his will uh, i think acts chapter 20 verse 32 let's look at acts 20 verse 32 acts 20 32 and now brethren i commend you to god and to the word of his grace which is able to build you up 
and give you an inheritance among all them that which are sanctified so the word of god builds and gives it does what it builds and give it builds you up and then gives you an inheritance among them which are sanctified hallelujah an inheritance is something passed down from a patriarch or a matriarch to the next generation an inheritance is something passed down from a patriarch or a matriarch to the next generation an inheritance is a transferred gift or wealth from parents or parental figures to children or beneficiaries there are gifts or wealth transferred down from parents or parental figures to children or beneficiaries inheritances are not worked for you don't work for inheritances you are born into them hallelujah they are rather handed down free of charge they are handed down how free of charge the qualification you need to partake of an inheritance is to be born into the family or be adopted into the family the qualification you need to partake of an inheritance is to be born into the family or to be adopted into the family hallelujah or married into the family whichever one praise god also we've seen very faithful servants partake of inheritances you know here and there very faithful servants people who have become so dear to their masters as they are though they were relatives of the master or children of the master remember the centurion the bible say his servant was dear to him and he went to jesus and said come and heal my servant okay so that kind of a servant you'll be shocked if that man is to write his will he would want to include that kind of man in his will because the servant was dear to him hallelujah so we have seen you know uh, that kind of relationship where someone serves somebody and qualifies for an inheritance another way to partake of inheritance is to have is to be greatly loved to be greatly loved you are not a servant you are not anything to the person the person just loves you and just likes you greatly you know that's pure favor and so when they want when, upon their going they put you in the wheel that you are greatly loved and so just like in the natural uh, where you are born into a family and you qualify for an inheritance in the same manner when you are born into christ jesus you also qualify for an inheritance there are a lot of inheritances loaded in the bible that you ought to partake why am i teaching this teaching don't be born again and look like a criminal don't be born again and there's no evidence to show there's no goodness of god in your life to show that you are born again that's terrible you've got the now 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 the reason why people are born again and then there is nothing to show in their lives that they're born again is ignorance it is in the knowing that you do the having what you know you have what you don't know you can't have a scripture will not jump out of the pages and come and fulfill itself in your life is what you know you have hallelujah praise god he said you shall know the truth and what will happen and the truth you know will make you free somebody shout hallelujah so we said your first inheritance eternal life we talked about that we may we forget to talk about maybe the third service your next inheritance is the holy spirit let's get down to uh part of your rights and privileges in christ jesus uh are the fact that you have inheritances you have what inheritance as soon as you gave your life to jesus you were you were given an inheritance you received the right to claim certain inheritances in god these inheritances are both known some are known some are not known to you okay so the one you know you claim but the others you don't know so you keep pressing to know so you you are aware of some of them you are not aware of the rest this is why he gave us the holy spirit the part of the reason why god gave us the holy spirit is so we can know the things that have been given to us the holy spirit 
is the one that will guide you into the things that have been given to you somebody shout hallelujah let's see john chapter 16 verse 13 john chapter 16 verse 13 how be it when he the spirit of truth is come he will guide you into all truth for he shall not speak of himself but whatsoever he shall hear he shall hear that shall he speak and he will show you things to come so i, I just like that 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 rendition whatsoever he shall hear that shall he speak where did he hear it where did he hear it uh, first john chapter 5 verse 7 let's look at first john chapter 5 verse 7 he said whatsoever he shall hear that shall he speak first john 5 7 not one seven seven press number seven for there are three that bear record in heaven three that bear record in heaven the father the holy ghost sorry the father the word and the holy ghost and he said these three are one so what is the father the word that you know the word is jesus in heaven jesus is known as the word of god so what is the father the word and the holy ghost doing in heaven what are they doing he said there these three there are three that bear record record you know when you have meetings you have record keeping so they in heaven they take record so when the father the son and the holy ghost are having meeting there is a record what this meeting they're having who are they having the meeting about it's about me it's about you god doesn't discuss heaven in heaven <laughs> hallelujah <laughs> It is discussing us. That's why the angel said, what, what is man that thou art? You are mindful. You're, in this heaven, you are always talking about man. Hallelujah. So now let's see verse 8 of 1 John chapter 5. See what happened in 1 John chapter 5 verse 8. So when they now came down, he said, and there are three that bear witness on earth. In heaven is record. On earth is witness. What are they witnessing about? what is the witness they are witnessing about the record that have been kept so if brother Emmanuel want to marry and is going after the wrong sister the Holy Ghost who has the record of meeting about him in heaven we say bros is wrong oh come back are you hearing me now come back kuka kuka Oh, sister, sister, sister. Looking for one name now. <laughs> sister Emanuela. Want to invest in a business. And the Holy Ghost look at the record. This is not the will of the Father. Don't put your money. Don't put your money. Sister Emanuela should hear. It doesn't matter how that business looks lucrative. Don't put your money. But if it's the Emmanuel put for um, Emmanuel force herself and put her money, you say bye bye to the money. Praise God. You start biting your finger. Hi, miss. That's why the Holy Ghost is giving to you to guide you into how many truth? All truth. So stop stop living life without the guidance of the holy ghost the holy ghost is your guide so if he is our guide at every junction you should ask him let me so holy ghost you should go out far with this one what do i do here now and don't move till the holy ghost gives you clarity did you hear what i said huh? you want to invest you want to propose you want to accept a proposal some sisters they propose to you today the same day you give answer as how even the next day self is why even if you are cock sure surely sure just pray first take three days no be so don't pray just in case it just give you proposal <laughs> oh, that night you call the brother in case you see another sister <laughs> The answer is yes. Desperado. 
Praise God. <laughs> Praise the Lord. See First Corinthians chapter 2 verse 9 and 12. Sorry, 9 to 12. See what it says. I, I, I really need to stress this matter of the Holy Spirit. Hopefully one of these days, if not this year, maybe next year, we're going to teach about the Holy Ghost. And I'm going to teach it for five years. One month a year for five years. Till it sinks in. Hallelujah. First Corinthians chapter 2 verse 9. But as it is written, I has not seen, nor ear heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man, the things which God has prepared for them that love him. So eyes have not seen it. Ears have not heard it. It has not entered to the heart of man. So all the things you think you have, or the things you think you know, or the things you think you possess, it is nowhere near what God has in mind for you. God has much more. Why? You are in Christ Jesus. See verse, 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 verse 10. Verse 10, verse 10, verse 10. He said, but God has revealed them unto us. How? By his spirit. For the spirit does what? Search at how many things? What kind of things? The deep things of God. See the capital S in the spirit. Go back to verse 10 capital s capital s is the spirit the holy spirit he searches all things yeah the deep things of god so why should you be moving in this world blindly when you are born again and you're supposed to have the holy ghost or you have the holy ghost you are not utilizing him you're not you're not responding to his guidance you are you are investing blindly you are marrying blindly you are traveling blindly you are doing things blindly why not engage the holy spirit verse 11 see verse 11 he said for what man knoweth the things of man save the spirit of man which is in him even so the things of god knoweth no man but the spirit of god now see verse 12 everybody one two go now we have received not the spirit of the world but the spirit which is of god that we might know that we might do it read it read it that we might know what the things that are freely given to us of god there are things god and again he's talking in in past tense god has given to us so I, again if you don't know it you can't have it you can't get born again and throw away your bible i'm saved thank god your Bible is gathering dust and all reading it. Read it. Read it. So he says, search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life. Search it. Read that Bible. Whatever blessing you see there is your own. Did you hear what I said? God is talking to you personally from the Bible. The Bible is no longer talking about Elisha, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, or, or, or Peter, or Paul. It's talking about who? Praise God. I said praise the Lord. Glory to Jesus. That we might know the things that are freely. That's an inheritance. Freely given to you of God. According to the scriptures. The Bible says you have a goodly heritage. Psalm chapter 16. Verse 5 and 6. It says you have a goodly heritage. You have a goodly heritage. Look at what it says. The Lord is the portion of my inheritance in other words the lord is my inheritance and the and, and what and of the uh, and of my cup thou maintainest my lord go on go to the next one the lines are fallen unto me in pleasant places yay i have a good inheritance are you hearing what i'm talking about but for that to happen look at what must happen first see verse 5 verse 5 must happen first what does verse 5 say he said the lord is a portion of my inheritance the lord is the portion of my inheritance meaning god is your inheritance when you receive jesus as your lord and savior you become qualified for inheritances that are available in christ but he must first be read that verse 5 in nlt verse 5 in nlt 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 everybody read one two go Lord, you are my inheritance. Are you hearing what I'm talking about? God is your inheritance. He is your first inheritance. 
God, you are my inheritance, my cup of blessing. You guard all that is mine. Hallelujah. Verse 6, verse 6, verse 6, verse 6, verse 6. The land you have given me is a pleasant land. What a wonderful inheritance. Somebody shout hallelujah. The Lord is your inheritance. So if, see, 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 see. First, make him your inheritance. Make him your portion. Let him be your first possession. Are you getting me now? Don't run after things. If so, somebody comes to the Lord and you come to the Lord and say, Lord, Lord, these, these are the following things I want you to give me. Number one, give me riches. Number two, give me possession. Number four, number three, give me treasure. Number five, give me, give me wealth. Yes. The Lord said, Alpha. I thought me is first thing you have. Let me be your inheritance first. Are you getting what I'm talking about? You are my inheritance. God is your inheritance. Somebody say, God is my inheritance. Come on, say it louder. Say, God is my inheritance. Hallelujah. Upon receiving Jesus to your life, your destiny begins to open up. Let's, let's see that same scripture. Oh, you don't have God's word. You have God's word translation. God's word. You have. You don't have. Praise God. Let me read it to you. God's word. He said, the Lord is my inheritance and my cup. You are the one who determines my destiny. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The Lord is my inheritance and my cup. You determine Alabakaya. Once he becomes your inheritance, that he is now your own. He is now has the right to determine your destiny. To receive Jesus is to correct your destiny. You determine my destiny. Hallelujah. Woo, glory to God. The Lord is my inheritance. You are the one who determines my, my, my destiny. Your boundary lines mark out pleasant places for me. Indeed, my inheritance is something beautiful. Hey, whoa. So when you gave your life to Jesus, certain things became your, your heritage or your inheritance. They became your heritage or your inheritance. Being born again into the kingdom of God will give you free pass into certain blessings free of charge. Will give you free pass into certain blessings. And I'll list a few of them right now of those blessings. Number, th number three, we did number one and two already. I may repeat it. Number three is divine preservation and protection divine preservation and protection divine preservation and protection as you came into the lord jesus christ you entered into divine preservation so when the devil tries to lie to you that they will kill you they will kill you laugh very well because of the scripture i want to show you now you will do what if you can't laugh real laugh fake it <laughs> oh. <laughs> satan you can play you will kill who me do you know where i am my life is in god I am in Christ. Then Christ is packaging God. To keep me, you must find Christ. No. You must find God. Key God. Remove Christ. Key Christ. Remove and then look for me. The barrier against you is massive. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The next time somebody tells you I'm going to die, laugh very well. It will neutralize their power. Just laugh, 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 laugh. Even if you are, even if you fear, just laugh. You understand that kind of thing? Even fear catch you. Just laugh. Where, where? Then go home and pray. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Eh? Because if fear is in your heart, you must pray without fear. You understand now? Then search for some scripture to, uh, you know, to neutralize it. You understand? But right there, don't panic. Just laugh. Is that your funny? Is that your kidding? Oh my God. 
enter your car legebede lagabada lagaya faratabasas is somebody hearing me isaiah chapter 54 verse 17 isaiah 54 verse 17 look at it look at it look at it no weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper and every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment thou shalt condemn this is the heritage of the servants of the lord and their righteousness is of me said the lord that's a new testament statement he said we are the righteousness of god in christ how come isaiah is talking about it in the old testament they are right okay let me read it from down up because your righteousness is of me said the lord no weapon are you hearing me from the you shall prosper and every tongue that rises against you in judgment is condemned why your righteousness is of me Woo! glory to god are you hearing what i'm talking about today eh? no weapon no weapon eh? see 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 second corinthians chapter 5 verse 21 let's confirm that thing that isaiah said let's confirm it second corinthians 5 21 for 521 are you okay for he had made him to be seen for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of god in him he said no weapon formed against you are prosper and every tongue that rises against you in Germany you shall condemn for this is the heritage of the servants of god and what my righteousness is of god so in case you want to use sin against me i declare to you that i have I, I have an imputed righteousness a positional righteousness given to me of god hallelujah no weapon no weapon did you hear what god said he said no weapon physical or spiritual no weapon did you hear me now no weapon formed against you shall prosper by, by virtue of the righteousness of jesus christ hallelujah no matter the weapon that is formed and by and whatever material that was used to form it for the fact that you are in christ jesus the weapon is bound to fail those who have sense we say loud amen They can form it but it won't prosper it can't prosper it can't prosper they can design it anyhow but it won't fly it won't fly hallelujah <laughs> uh, they may fashion it the best way they can it won't be your size it will not be your size are you hearing what i'm talking about today Woo! they can craft it anyhow they like it won't catch you it will not catch you they may have created it with your name they put your name and they stamp your name this one is for you it will fail drastically i say it will fail drastically why oh you see let me tell you when weapons are fired they find sin entrance they find a loophole of sin to penetrate but god is saying your righteousness is of me you know God knows you're not perfect. First of all, just be sincere with God. Someone said, be sincere with God. Just be sincere. Don't be a criminal. Let me balance myself. You are both adult thieves. You go and do bad things and say, my righteousness, my righteousness is a God. Huh? You go, you go, you go, you go, you go. You lie, intentional lying. My righteousness is of God. Stop it stop it open up to god say lord you know me i love you sometimes i don't know when i used to hmm? father cover me i sleep with somebody see somebody and, and you finish sleeping with a person you wake up kara mama my righteousness of god are you are you are you all right are you normal <laughs> <laughs> praise god you can't do that you can't do that don't do that 
You are weakening your angels. You are weakening the hand of God on your life. You are, you are, you are compromising your defense mechanism. The one God built for you. Are, you are compromising it. You are exposing it to, 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 to serious battery. After a while it will collapse. Praise God. Righteousness gives you boldness. Righteousness gives you audacity. Righteousness gives you, gives you, oh, what is this word, oh? Huh? It gives you, it gives you sagacity. Huh? It gives you, it gives you ruggedity. When you, when sin is not staring you in the face, you are very confident. Are you hearing what I'm talking about? And then any other place you may have made a mistake that you are not aware of, the righteousness of God stands for you. Hallelujah. Stands and covers you. Because in a day, a day, a whole, a whole day passed till you sin, you won't know. Are you see? You do one thing, you don't even know you have done something. You just go your way. But for, for, under that condition, God disallows the devil to touch you. He disallows the enemy. Somebody shout hallelujah. I said somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Number four. The next inheritance you have is the inheritance of the fruit of the womb. The inheritance of the fruit of the womb. Psalm 127 verse 3. Psalm 127 verse 3. Lo! Children are an inheritance of the Lord. Or another word, heritage. Children are, it, we are not when God said this word, he didn't ask for the integrity of your fallopian tube. Or your uterus. Or your Philippian tube. Or Colossian tube. Or any of the chants. Ephesians and, uh, 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 and Corinthians. He is not, he's not asking. You may be wombless. As far as you are a woman. And you found this scripture. The scripture is yours. He said, Lord, children are what? They are the heritage of the Lord. And the fruit of the womb is his reward. God gives you children as inheritance. It is your heritage in Christ Jesus. If you want it. It's your heritage. It's your heritage. People have believed God and believed God. Some have had children as seven. You heard that man of God. You heard Bishop Fredado talk about the lady who gave birth in Kenya. Is it Kenya? At 73. Because she won't let God rest. She kept believing God. They call for those who want fruit of the womb. At 70, she went out. Man of God saw her and tried to dodge. That's hoping she's standing in, 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 in the gap for somebody. Who are you standing for? Myself. Hey, whoa. 70. Guys have, anyway, the truth is that Sarah is the oldest person to give birth. As long as your record does not reach Sarah's own, keep trusting God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Keep trusting God. Menopause, they say, is somewhere around that kind of 45. Some people are very stubborn. They keep having, they don't have, they refuse to have menopause, even at 60. That means there's hope. But Sarah own times two. 90. You shall have a son, she laughs. <laughs> we don't know I'm old. We don't know I'm really old. Is it because it was Abraham. <laughs> oh God. Why did you laugh? I didn't laugh. Oh. I didn't laugh. He said, you laugh. Is there anything too hard for the Lord? And that's how Sarah's 
belly started growing. You know, you know, at 70, 75, 80, your fallopian tube has twisted. I said, it, it, it's blocked by self. Your womb has, has, has slept. I said, it has ceased to be with you after the manner of women. You don't have menses, you don't have period, you don't have interval, you don't have anything. So the womb has relaxed and slept. Then the word of the Lord comes. The womb starts to gyrate. The word twister started, starts to straighten out. Starts to straighten out. Hallelujah. Eh? The womb, life starts entering inside. Are you hearing what I'm talking about? And, 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 and desire starts to come back. You know that desire? Just one last time. One hand, you score goal. 90 years old. Hallelujah. See what Psalm 1 to 8. See Psalm 1 to 8. Psalm 1 to 8. From verse 1. Quick, 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 quick. Psalm 1 to 8. Your wife. Oh, you know what I was looking for. Your wife shall be as a fruitful vine by the sides of your house and your children like olive plants around about your table. If you are a child of God and you believe God, can you shout it out? Amen. amen. Let me talk to you single people. If when we talk things like this, you don't want to say amen, it's for them. Amen. <laughs> Fight your battles now. So that by the time you marry, you are finished fighting. Not that they prophesy and say, <laughs> Stop that rubbish. Start saying your amen. Start prophesying. Amen. Shout loud. Amen. So that by the time the time comes, I fall past. Praise the name of the Lord. I say praise the name of the Lord. Look as if we are going to have three services today. For these labor people that are coming. Praise the Lord. I say praise the Lord. That is where I got my daughter's name from. Say your wife shall be like a fruitful vine. Let me even say this to us. Fruitful vine. Vine. Most of the time you see vine in the Bible, it's talking about your wife. Go and do your research. Talking about your wife. So the seed shall be prosperous. This is Zachariah. The seed shall be prosperous. And the heaven will give her due. And all that. And, and the vine. He talks about. So when you see these things came to Malachi 3. He said, neither shall your vine cast a young before the time. He's talking about your wife. Praise the name of the Lord. When you catch one rev, hold it very well. Hold it well and run with it everywhere. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. The fruit of the womb is your inheritance. God knew there would be all, all manner of challenges. All manner of fallopian tube issues, all manner of uterus issues, all manner of hormonal imbalance, all manner of all manner of all manner of attacks, all manner of remote controls, all manner of um, reports from doctors, all manner of research. So God stood in heaven and made a declaration: "Lo, children, I heritage of the, they are the inheritance I give you." For being in Christ Jesus. So take it as raw as it is. It's your inheritance. It's not asking you about what is happening inside your belly. This is your what? Your inheritance. Take it. It's yours. Hallelujah. Tell them for me. Say it's yours. The person didn't see the year you were. Tell that person. Say it's yours. Look back and tell somebody. Say it's yours. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah the word heritage refers to inheritance 
inheritance and the fact that you are born again means that the fruit of the womb came as part of the package of your new birth it came as part of the package it's your portion it's your own god gave you walk in it declare it speak it it is your right it's your privilege it's your kingdom benefit it's your blessing from the lord it comes with the package of your salvation it comes with package so when god called abraham for, for instance let's look at abraham's story when he called abraham he, that was salvation the calling of abraham in genesis chapter 12 was the salvation of abraham the kind of old testament salvation he called him out of his father's house out of his his country out of his kindred okay so that is salvation you will see in the book of isaiah chapter 51 verse 1 51 verse 1 and 2 51 verse 1 Check it, check it, check it, check it, check it. Isaiah 51, verse 1. Hear me. Isaiah 51, verse 1. He says, Hearken unto me, ye that pull after righteousness, ye that seek the Lord, look unto the rock when she were hewn, unto the hole of the pit when she were dig. Verse 2, verse 2, verse 2 says, Look unto Abraham your father, and unto Sarah that bear you. For I called him alone. And what did I do to him? I blessed him. And as a result of the blessing, what happened? I increased him. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So when Abraham was called, he was called unto salvation. That was a kind of salvation. Hallelujah. And God blessed him. So Abraham's call from his father's house was salvation he being saved was entitled from that moment he accepted the salvation plan of god he was entitled to the blessing of riches of wealth of land of houses and of the fruit of the womb when you are born again you are blessed and that blessing is a carrier of everything all that god needs to do when god created man what did he give to man what did he give to man he gave man land eh? he gave him house gave him river what did he give to man the blessing and what did man have, have after that he had everything god just gave man said take the blessing is all did you hear what i said the blessing is what or the blessing contains everything it contains everything so he so god blessed abraham and from that day the fruitfulness journey for abraham started hallelujah so if you have responded to the call of salvation you have entered into the covenant of blessing that is contained in your new birth if you are born again you are already blessed i know some of you look at me already blessed with gary i sip yesterday i'm just telling you now that you are blessed i don't care how many gary you you, you sapped or sipped you are already blessed are you hearing what i'm saying you are blessed huh? find out why you are still sipping gary but, but, but in the meantime thank god for the gary because some people don't have anything nothing nothing to use whole body and spirit or soul or soul is body and soul hallelujah by new birth you have received the blessing in your womb you have received the blessing in your womb somebody shout my womb is blessed even if you don't want to have children again, just shout and say, my womb is blessed. May not be walking right now, but it is there. Even if it's not walking now, somebody say, it's there. It's there, it's there. Very soon to be activated. There's something God will reveal to you. There's something you're going to know. There's something you're going to see, and it will be activated. Somebody shout, hallelujah. Okay, so God bless Abraham, but Abraham was delayed. He was delayed 25 years. Why? Why the delay? What happened? Why was he delayed? Let me tell you reasons why God would allow or permit some delays. Hmm? I will just narrow down to fruit of the womb. Why he would allow or even permit delays. Delays give you opportunity to correct your relationship with yourselves. That's husband and wife. Before the child or be, before the children come. He gives you opportunity to correct your relationship. You know one thing you don't want to do when you get mad, when you start having children, is to be fighting in front of children, to be quarreling in front of children, and to be using the children as errand boys and girls. Go and tell your mother I'm hungry. 
Go and tell your father he didn't give money. Go and tell your mother I'm warning her for the last time. Mommy, daddy says warning for the last time. Go and tell me it's not serious. That mom says you're not serious. You know that kind of. <laughs> when two elephants fight, who suffers? And you know who the grass is here? It's the children. They're the ones that suffer. You know, we're just sending the child in here, and the child just wanted. One day the child secretly said, and think, why was I born into this family? Hallelujah. So God gives you time to correct your relationship. And that's what happened with Abraham and Sarah. God had to wait for them to correct their relationship. It got corrected. Sarah, Abraham was proud. Sarah was contentious. And it just wouldn't work. It wouldn't work. They tried to have a child. What came out was Ishmael. And Ishmaelin. It is Ishmaelin. Hallelujah. Amen. So that was the first reason. The second reason why God will permit a delay is to, is to give God uh, uh, gives God the chance to prepare you for the kind of child that is to come out of your lungs. How many of you know if for any reason you have a delay, let me tell you, your, your womb has been designated, selected for a certain kind of picking. Sorry, let me speak PG English. The picking will go come up for your body. It's a very serious something. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Check out throughout the Bible all those who had delays. Did you see the picking they had? Is this small thing? Who did Hannah have? Who was Samuel? The first prophet of Israel. The last judge of Israel and the first prophet. He was the transition man. He ended the reign of judges and began the reign of prophets. That woman must be, God must permit you to have that kind of child. What are you talking about? You want to drop bone somewhere in here? Somewhere low. Ah. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. What about John Baptist? Eliza and Zaki. <laughs> eh? Eh? Did you see that the Bible said they were righteous? They were blameless. They didn't do anything wrong. God just simply said, This is your womb. Only one picking you go get. That picking will be my man. He will announce the coming of my Messiah. So just stay there and wait for me. And the day it came, Zachariah had forgotten about it. Zachariah was just serving God. I love you, Lord. And I leave. He was offering incense. My voice. And the angel came. All here. Angel, what's the matter? Say that your wife shall have a son and and he said he shall he shall be strong shall be mighty before the lord da, 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 da. Zachary say, no first he told you your prayer has been answered Zachary said, which prayer i can't remember the last time i prayed that prayer guess what when you prayed you forgot god didn't forget did you hear what i said he didn't forget he he saw the prayer he consulted with his counsel with his will and his will told him it's for a certain time okay all right hallelujah uh -huh. and before they say praise the lord eliza was pregnant very old age those of you who are sleeping you know try you have not tried at all this powerful message i'm preaching pray all night you sleep on me father forgive them you know not what they do Praise God. Shoot or sleep. <laughs> Hallelujah. So God prepares you for the kind of child he. What about Samson? What about Samson? Mr. and Mrs. Manoah. Mr. and Mrs. Manoah. He said, let your wife stop drinking. Stop drinking wine. Stop drinking kuno. Stop drinking fermented things. Stop drinking all these things. The angel said that you, he said to her, you, will have a, you, are, you are going to have a child. You will deliver Israel from the hand of Philistine. He will be great. Meanwhile, stop. Don't drink anything that has alcohol. Don't go there. God shall be a Nazarite from whom. You hear me? So yes, sir. She ran to her husband. One, one man of God came to me and told me that, that he, she didn't tell the husband. He said she should stop drinking. No. He said, I'm going to have a child. So the husband said, let's go. Where did you see him? 
He showed the place. See this way I saw him. He said, Oh, oh that man of God, please come back and uh, explain something to us. Yeah? The angel came, appeared to her. She ran and called the husband. The husband says, uh, We heard your, your, your prophecy. How shall we order the child? You know what he said? Let, let the woman take it to the things I told her. <laughs> let her take it to the things. Madam, what did they tell you? He said, I shouldn't drink again. It means the woman was a boozer. <laughs> Mrs. Manoa was a boozy. She could booze. You know, all this, all this, you see, all this small, small, uh, you know, you know, let me just, is, you know, uh, there are those of you who drink, who drink the one that they even put in bottle. The one that they use, eh, to, that, sorry, wood, back of tree to construct. No dosage, no percentage. The alcohol is off limit. They're just, uh, 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 you kill yourself. <laughs> you kill yourself and kill your liver. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Do, are you not seeing? He, he didn't say let the man. He said let the woman. First of all, it means the man was not drinking. Second of all, it, it, what, this one doesn't concern the man. It really cons the womb where the baby is to be incubated. This womb should not experience any alcohol. Whatever you drink, the baby has drunk. Whatever you drink, baby has what? You are drunk, baby is drunk. I, I'm telling you. You somersault physically, but you also somersault in the womb. <laughs> Praise God. I said, praise the Lord. So avoid it. And that's how Samson came. The man upon whose life God's hand was to save them from the hand of Philistine. Let's look at the last reason why God won't even allow any delay at all. Delays give you time to prepare for proper parenting. It, some people, parenting just comes natural. Others have to be prepared. Others have to be prepared. You have to you have to learn you have to learn do you know that that was part of abraham's problem that was part of that was part of the problem god had with abraham genesis chapter 18 verse 19 genesis chapter 18 verse 19 god said for i know him ah! oh let's read from verse 17 let's read from 17 genesis chapter 18 from verse 17 mm, is and, and and the lord said shall i hide from abraham the thing which i do verse 18 seeing that abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. Everybody read verse 19 very loud. One to go. For I know him again. Again. By this time Abraham didn't have a child. And God is saying I know him. For I know him that he will do what? The children he doesn't have yet. God already knows what he will do with the children. That he will command his children and his household after him and they shall keep the way of the lord to do justice and judgment that the lord may bring upon abraham that which he has spoken can you imagine that god already knew he knew abraham's capacity guess what you may say lord i'm ready it's only god that knows when you are ready hallelujah only him knows when you are ready glory to god somebody say i have an inheritance shall he last i have an inheritance I am blessed. Not everybody, everybody stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. It's like you think I am joking with this thing. Huh? Shall it out, say I have an inheritance. I am blessed from the day of my salvation up until this day. Loud I say the blessing of God is at work in my life. The blessing of God is at work in my life. I have eternal life. I have the Holy Spirit. I, I have a goodly heritage. I have the blessing of the fruit of the womb. I am blessed in all things. In the name of Jesus. Lift your hands and give him praise. Give him praise. Give him thanks. You need, you need to respond or you need to respond. You need to respond to God. You need to respond to God.
Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name. All these blessings are not for people who are not in Christ Jesus. Remember, we're talking about new creation realities. This is the reality of everyone who is born again. The reality of everyone in Christ Jesus. You are here today, you are not in Christ Jesus. You are not born again. Your life is not in God. You need to make sure of that right now. Don't leave here. Don't take one inch out of this place. Not ensuring your life in God. You are running a risk. You are maintaining a life of suffering and pain and shame the songwriter say i'm um, you took my sin my guilt my shame and you showed me mercy god wants to show you mercy today he wants to take away your guilt your sin your shame and he wants to show you mercy you're here today and you would like to have a relationship with jesus you like to have a walking relationship with jesus you're here today and you like your sins forgiven you like to make heaven you like your name to be written in the book of life all that can be settled now no no go and come right now so wherever you are you belong to any of this category i'd like you to pray this prayer with me you know in your heart that there's a distance between you and god god is so far from you you like to close that gap you like him to come near i like you to pray this prayer with me right now you need god to restore you pray this prayer with me now go ahead say lord jesus say this prayer with me say lord jesus with all my heart i thank you for taking my place on the cross of calvary thank you for dying for me i accept your sacrifice on the cross and i receive you today into my life as my lord and my personal savior wash me with your blood cleanse me from sin restore me back to you write my name in the book of life i vow from today by your grace that i will serve you for the rest of my life in jesus mighty name amen and amen hallelujah